Okay, so let's start again our lecture. Are you all there? So as before this uh, short break, uh, I told you we are going to uh, learn about uh, how we can use different cell and molecular biological tools or genetic tools to study development. So we are going to now uh, take example of, let's say, uh, let me... okay, here we go. We are going to take example of uh, a homeotic transformation and then try to see how can we, uh, you know, through molecular biological tools, understand this question of homeosis. So let's assume that we have um, We have a question in front of us in which um, we have performed a, after a genetic screen, genetic screen for uh, segmentation. And we have seen a phenotype in which we see a para segment uh, six transformed uh, para segment seven transformed into para segment uh, six or let's say we we call this uh, t3 transformed to t2 or any other uh, homeotic transformation we we can name and this is after a genetic screen this is a phenotype we have seen now, as a scientist, we have to hypothesize that what is actually happening? What could be the basis of this transformation? Any transformation, it can be, even one can say, okay, you have uh, T2 has become T3. So thoracic segment two has become T3 or uh, T3 has become T2, whatever, you know, morphological phenotypes you can imagine, or let's say A5 uh, has become A4. Uh, so you have to hypothesize. If we are in the para segment six, seven, or uh, para segment five domains, phenotype lies there or let's say uh, thoracic segment three to two or two to three, we know we are in the domain of UVX. If we are in abdominal segment A5 to A4, or let's say A2 to A1, et cetera, uh, we should know that we are in the ABDA or ABDB domains, et cetera. So your hypothesis should be according to uh, the scientific knowledge you have. Now, let's assume uh, we are in this T3, T2 uh, phenotype we see. So we hypothesize that, you know, it's most likely uh, in this genetic mutant, uh, we have mutation in UBX. Now, if you have hypothesized that there is mutation in the UBX, then you should be able to design experiments. Mutation in UBX means you are losing expression of UBX in uh, these regions. And that's why you know there is homeotic transformation. Now you have to, now to prove your hypothesis, hypothesis you have to do experiments. 
you have to design experiments and an obvious experiment which should come to your mind is to prove there is loss of UVX expression. How you will do this? So if I ask you, you have to show that there is loss or delta of UVX expression, how you will do this? G Fariha. Sir, we can <clears throat> we can do the first you um, like we can do the Western blotting or if you want to do like in the entire embryo, if you want to check for this expression, then you can do the immunostaining as well with the antibody against that. Um, no, but then I think that if it's the mutant, then it possibly possibly um, at the functional level. So we will go for the protein expression, I guess, and that would be done through the Western blotting. Yeah, but you have to correlate. You have to correlate that UBX. So th this segments, let's say, you are saying I, I'm having uh, um, T3, <clears throat> T3 like this, <clears throat> T2 has converted into T3. So you have, if you do Western blotting, you will be crushing all this. You won't be able yes. to see these specific segmental expression. So what normally we do, we can do immunostaining or we can also do in situ hybridization, either of the two exper experiments. When you will use immunostaining and you will always compare it with the wild type. So this is your mutant and this is your wild type where you have you know, T2, T3, uh, the normal, all the normal segments, abdominal segments. And as a immunostaining, you will be able to see, okay, in uh, T2, normally UBX is not there, but now I have UBX everywhere. In T2 as well as T3, normally T2 may be okay. Here, you have only in the T3. Clear? Immunostraining is done by, of course, you will simply take antibody against UBX. You will uh, prepare these embryos. You don't need to memorize those protocols. And then you will throw this antibody. You will strain these embryos. And wherever UBX protein will be there, this antibody will go and bind to UBX protein and give you a signal. Or in case of in situ hybridization, you will take a probe. Uh, an RNA probe you will prepare to detect, uh, a DNA probe you will uh, prepare to detect RNA expression. In situ hybridization is for detecting RNA and you will see UBX RNA is present there as well. Clear? Now, okay, this is your correlation experiment. You have hypothesized something and you have proven that, yeah, it is due to loss of UBX expression. I see this phenotype. Now, so that, that is not all. As a scientist, you have to do multiple experiments using multiple different experimental approaches to again and again prove the same hypothesis you have. Now, if the next question, I ask, okay, so this is your mutant. Now, show me, show us, you know, that if you lose UBX expression, you develop this phenotype T2 going to T3. Of course, you have already shown in the mutant. But now you are saying, if I bring down the expression of UBX, 
now you are not going to use murine you are going to use wild type bring down expression of uvx and see if i can convert t2 to t3 what kind of experiment you will do Anji, what kind of experiment you will do? So, sir, we can knock down the level of uh, UBX in wild type by using RNAi. Very good. Very good. This. So, what you can do, you will use RNAi strategy, and in flies, you have this. specific genetic tool called us gal4 system so you clone the double stranded rna or, you know you will clone ubx gene in this orientation first in forward then anti sense orientation with a spacer under us sites you will cross you will make transgenic flies these transgenic flies you will cross them with gal4 driver gal4 is a transcription factor yeast transcription factor there are specialized transgenic flies which contain gal4 transcription factor under specific promoters let's say a uh, promoter which is specifically expressing in 2 t2 t3 t4 an enhancer okay or you can take ubx enhancer you can take wingless enhancer you can take i specific enhancer you can take leg specific enhancer so you have the control on the expression of once you will cross this fly line with this one you are going to specifically knock down because this double stranded rna will be expressed like this this double stranded rna will be chopped down by dicer and then knock down uh, wherever you want to bring down expression let's say we are uh, knocking down expression of ubx in t3 where normally ubx is expressed and we will see if we can bring this phenotype if now t3 is converted to t2 which is a proof that you know ubx is essential for t3 and if i bring down t3 uh, ubx in t3 t2 takes over so which means in my mutants when t2 is taken over by t3 it means ubx was ectopically active here clear so these are the kinds of strategies these are the kind of experiments we do okay now let's think of another question if i ask you a question that prove that the phenotype you see this t2 to t3 transformation in mutant prove that this mutant this phenotype is indeed due to ubx and not another mutation in the mutant did you get my question due to mutagenesis when you perform mutagenesis when you perform mutagenesis it is possible of course you found through in situ and immunostaining loss of ubx expression but isn't it possible that this phenotype is not due to ubx but due to a second site mutation you are unlucky that the mutant contains another mutation 
So what will you do? Sir, we can make a mutant for the UBX and then like take a wild type and mutate the UBX and then check the phenotype and compare the two using the different kinds of experiments. So you already have UBX mutant. You already shown through loss of uh, RNAi as well. What I am asking is you have to prove that the mutant you have, the phenotype is due to UBX. You don't need to produce new mutant. G marriage. What comes to your mind? Remember, your exam is going to be like this. I'm not going to ask you uh, questions regarding um, expression domain of ABD, ABDB, or gap genes, or NIPs, or Krupa. All your exam is going to be like this. We would have to use some sort of a control experiment to prove that it is, in fact, UBX causing the mutation. Yeah, so what control experiment you will design? And perhaps we can use the neighboring genes and try knocking them out and seeing the result. Oh, G. Momina. Sir, I think if we have in cell in the size ki progeny ke under, if we add somehow UBX again and see if we return or up in the original form, mein, then we can say that it will be so well. Very good. Very good. That's the experiment you will do. And we call that experiment genomic. rescue experiment. What Momina is postulating that if in this mutant, so we, we already have the mutant. She's saying if we are hypothesizing that this phenotype is due to UBX and UBX is the only missing factor, if we bring back the UBX into this mutant and it becomes wild type, it means there is no second site mutation, or even if there is by uh, bad luck, there is second site mutation, this phenotype is due to UBX because I'm bringing back only UBX. So we call this genomic rescue experiment. And what we do in this case, we take UBX wild type gene, wild type, normal gene. We clone this under its own promoter because you want UBX expression to be exactly mimicking the wild type. And then we prepare transgenic flies. So what we do in case of genomic rescue, we clone UBX wild type gene under its own promoter, which is UBX promoter. And we inject in flies. These flies, we, these are now the transgenic flies. You should know whenever you prepare transgenic flies, you have to have a transformation marker so that you are able to select that the embryos in which you injected your construct, it indeed contains your transgene. 
So transformation market, just like when we transform bacteria, we have some antibiotic resistance gene. So in case of flies, we normally use white plus, the gene which gives red eyes. Okay. The red eye color of flies is due to white gene. So what we do, we take white 1118 flies. White 1118 are the flies whose eyes are white. They are no more red. They are mutant for eye color. We inject with our construct. Okay, and when adult flies hatch from this embryo, which we have injected, what will be the eye color of these flies? Red. It will be red. It will not be red. And you tell me why. The transformation. red And if I say they will not be red, why they will not be red? And as an expert, I tell you, they will not be red. And they have the trans gene. G for Iha. Sir, um, so um, because you're injecting the this um, genomic rescue construct in this one, so the, the progeny of this fly will have the red color, but this uh, uh, this fly will not have the red color because. G Nurulain, kya samajh aa rahi hai? Sir, the same as what Fariha is saying, like you can't make its wild type of the the characteristic of the fly change by putting the construct in it like in the progeny hoegi, us, us mein hoongi changes i think progeny mein kyun hoongi? explain me like if the gene which we've inserted is like passed down into the progeny passed on where why these flies are these flies contain our trans gene which contains the but they've already program. developed a certain way. Yeah, I want to know the certain way. Like, you said that red is not going to be white. No, what's the You have to be scientific. What certain way they have developed? What stage we have missed of development? Ji Savera. Ahmed, no, Ji Savera, Ji Ji. No, I was just saying that I don't understand why they won't be uh, red. Okay, that's my job to tell you. I'll tell you. Ji Ahmed, Ahmed Nakvi. Sir, so much now. Ji Hania. Hania, can you switch on your camera? I want to see because many faces i recognize but i don't know due to this online who is in the class and kya aapke badge mein kaun kaun se bacche hain haniya to lagta hai gayi bhi hogi ye class se oh sir i'm here not sure now it's on g so do you Know the answer? No, sir. G. Momina, who uh, was the name of the name of the Fatima. Um, I think there will be white because so, uh, the fly is like 
उसके अंदर रेड के शायद जीन नहीं है सो मे बी दैट इज व्हाई इट्स गोइंग टू बी रिमेन वाइट नहीं वो तो वाकई म्यूटेंट है लेकिन हमने तो जीन इंजेक्ट किया है मैं कह रहा हूं जीन है इन एम्ब्रियोस में जी जारा खान so what freeha said that it will be in the progeny so not these flies will be red but the if they contain then the progeny of these flies will be red that was true but we have to know the scientific answer why scientific answer is when we inject these embryos with our transgene construct which is this one we are basically injecting the pole cells humne fly development mein shuru mein pole cells ki baat ki thi yaad hai pole cells are formed in first 60 to 90 minutes they are separated from the rest of the body so these pole cells if they are successfully injected by our construct these cells are going to make future oocyte or sperm cells and all the other cells which are going to contribute to the development of this this fly the ones which are going to make i they are somewhere here they don't contain this construct which we injected now when if this fly was transgenic when its progeny will come and its pole cells were injected when it will lay eggs or produce sperms the progeny will be red eyes this is very important concept now but this was a concept to make transgenic flies we were doing this experiment to do genomic rescue we will cross this fly with our <laughs> alhamdulillah with our mutant let's say what we assumed as ubx mutant and in the mutant we will see if our transgene is there we will select flies with our transgene what we will try to do we will try to have delta delta which means minus minus ubx our mutant is homozygous together with our transgene which is you can say ubx steric ubx promoter whatever name you give to this transgene now we know that minus minus ubx is dead but minus minus in the presence of our transgene if this fly minus minus in the presence of transgene survives if it is alive what has happened you have not only rescued the lethality but also you are going to see the phenotype if minus minus ubx plus transgene is p2 p3 a1 a a all the way to 8 is it wild type if it is wild type you will say this phenotype which we discovered here in our genetic screen is indeed due to ubx so this is genomic rescue does it make sense so sir i don't uh, get to where uh, the second mutation wala part is coming in because if we set up a knockdown and knockout wall experiment we are only removing ubx and if we are only removing ubx and we are getting that uh, phenotype isn't that a direct indication that ubx is responsible for that phenotype because we are only not transgenesis uh, mutagenesis we are knockdowning only ubx or knockouting only ubx so you should know that knockdown may have off target effects as well so of course we took ubx double stranded rna 
but what if it is knocking down another gene due to off target effects and we see such a phenotype so the whole concept is to disprove yourself and your hypothesis multiple times and every time when you dis you are trying to disprove your hypothesis but you fail to disprove that is the real science so by genomic rescue you are trying to prove that yeah my hypothesis is right but at the same time you are disproving yourself your hypothesis by saying yeah it could be a second site mutation as well so let's test if a second site mutation is there or no so let's bring back the ubx did i answer your question okay now let's ask another question design an experiment to prove that ubx can induce t2 to t3 transformation what was t2 t2 was a wing T three was a halter. Now T two has become a halter as well. So you have two halters in the mutant. This is what this is your mutant phenotype. No. Now I am saying design an experiment to prove that UBX can induce T two to T three. or another way to elaborate on this question is that ubx is indeed inducing not inducing ubx is responsible for t3 identity inducing t3 identity or halter formation now we are gone beyond the mutant we are no more talking about mutant we have already shown ubx if we genomic rescue phenotype gets rescued ubx is responsible for this phenotype immunostraining ubx is expressed in t2 as well there is additional expression knocking down you knock down you showed ubx t3 is gone now question is being asked is ubx the master regulator to give identity to this particular segment what kind of experiment you will design think deep we are at the moment what we are doing we are in a problem solving exercise we are trying to bring answer to a question which we have never known or which we have never done before and in science it takes time so take your time sir are we assuming that we know that the genes that come later uh, are responsible for Uh, the uh, segment the later 
I did not get your question, Momina. So, we said that the genes in which order are present in that order are they being expressed. So, Haan are we assuming that we have already? Yeah. When we yeah, are yeah. Uh, designing. Let's let's assume we don't know anything. Let's assume we are working in late seventies, early eighties. We have no idea. But what we are, what we definitely know is what we have done so far in these experiments. These are answers we have in our uh, lab. Knockdown and uh, genomic rescue, immunostainings. Um, genetic, uh, homeotic phenotype, etc. एक्सपेरिमेंट सोचने हैं सोना नहीं है अच्छा पे अटेंशन टू द वर्ड्स डिजाइन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट दैट यू बी एक्स कैन इंड्यूस कैन इंड्यूस अ होल्ड एयर और डिजाइन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट दैट अ जीन ए कैन इंड्यूस एन आई जीन ए कैन इंड्यूस अ विंग gene a can induce whatever <clears throat> we're talking about development g looks like nodoline has answer <clears throat> hmm? no acha you are not raising hand <clears throat> So sir, if in wild type, nucleus mm -hmm. can induce a halt here, if we somehow can induce its expression in some other, uh, so in other segments which are responsible, for example, the segment required for the formation of an eye disc or for the leg, we should get a halt here over there as well. Very good. That's the way to go. You know, you are going to move expression of UBX into a region where normally it is not expressed. You know, UBX is not expressed in or gene A or gene B, whichever we are talking about. If you take that gene and express it 
in a region where normally it is absent. We call this in genetic terms or in, we call this ectopic gene expression. Ectopic means away from its natural location. So let's say we took again our UBX gene cloned under US promoter. You remember we had this US promoter. Now what we have, last time we used US RNAi. Now we are using wild type UBX gene under US promoter. We will cross with, let's say as uh, Abdullah said, we will express UBX in uh, using a GAL4 driver. I-specific GAL4. I-specific means this GAL4, this transcription factor is under the control of, let's say, ILS enhancer. ILS is a gene which is expressed only and only in I. So this enhancer is driving expression of this transcription factor, which is GAL4. We will use this, this is called driver line. We will use this driver line, GAL4 driver line, cross it with our US UBX. And in the progeny, we will see, so now what is what should be in the progeny? In the progeny, GAL4 is expressed in the eyes only. It will go and bind to US its DNA binding site and activate UBX in the eyes. Now UBX is normally silent in the eye. If we see halter development in the eyes, this is a direct proof that UBX can indeed induce T3 or halter structure in the eyes when ectopically expressed. Isn't it a fun experiment to do? This is how they did these experiments. I often show you in the bio 101 and bio 221, I show you fruit flies in which they have developed legs on the head of uh, fruit fly or uh, eyes on the leg and wing of the fruit fly. That is this ectopic expression of eyeless gene there. Is it clear so far? Okay, good. What is time now? We still have time. How many times class? 11.50. 50. 50. We, we still have time. So now, uh, let's do another thing. What was this? This is the transgenic flies we made. Okay. Uh, this is basically what we look we injected these embryo white 11 18 white minus white minus means these are basically these white 11 18 flies and their eyes are not red uh, we injected our transgenic flies with this transformation marker which contains white plus gene embryos were injected in the g0 generation zero flies were not white only in the progeny we have this red eyes, which is transgenic. You, whether you are making uh, these flies, US, sorry, whether you are making these flies, US, UBX, or you made uh, US RNA fly, RNAi flies, whenever you make transgenic flies, that's the uh, way to go. Now, before I come to genetic screen, uh, yeah, this is the GAL4 driver I, I was talking about. Uh, so you have a tissue specific enhancer and we used, for example, in our just eyeless enhancer. So this is going to express this yeast transcription factor GAL4 only and only in the eye region. Let's say I say wingless enhancer, the one which is responsible for activation of wingless. So wingless is expressed in all different body segments. For example, in wing, 
it expresses like this. In uh, I imaginal disk, wingless is expressed like this. If I use wingless gal for, I'll see on different imaginal disk, different regions of tissues, only and only here gal four will be there. My US, which are basically gal four binding sites, where this transcription factor is going to come and bind. My transcription, US, I had, let's say, US UBX transgene. This transgene is present in all cells everywhere, but it will only be expressed where wingless is driving this GAL4. If I have eyeless enhancer, then my transgene will be expressed only and only in the eyes, but my transgene will be off because this eyeless enhancer is only expressed here. It's not expressed in legs or other places. Although these cells, each of these cells contain this, these two driver line and uh, driver constructs are in this one. So this US gal system, this is also called Swiss knife for Drosophila. You know, you can do multiple things with this. Uh, Ahmad, are you there on the in the class? Yes, sir. Can you send them all the review we often give to students the US GAL4 system, which is the in its title, yeah, it's yes. Swiss knife of Yes, sir. I have it. I will, I will please, send them. Please send it to all these students. They should read that review as soon as possible. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So one last thing I wanted to cover is about the uh, genetic screen, how they do genetic screen in fruit flies. Uh, this is basically uh, Muller's uh, screen. I think 1930s or so he did this. This was the first ever fruit fly genetic screen. There's a scheme similar to that. Look, what they have done here, they have taken males. Males are treated with EMS. EMS is the mutagen. Now, my question to you is, why we are using males? We talked about this in a bio two to one as well. This particular concept. Hmm? Males of Drosophila do not uh, cannot undergo recombination. Yes, very good. We use Drosophila males because they don't show any recombination. And why a recombination is important here? Because once we expose them to the EMS, these males are then crossed to females, which contain balancer chromosomes. You should go back and read about balancer chromosomes. This is your assignment for today. Balancer chromosomes in fruit fly. Now, if there will be recombination in the males, chances are our mutant gene, which got hit by EMS mutagenesis, through recombination, it may be messed up and our genetic crosses for the genetic scheme will be disturbed. So that's why we use the males because they have zero recombination in fruit flies. Now, <clears throat> the females which we use, they are with specialized uh, chromosomes and those chromosomes are called balancer chromosomes. These flies uh, are only viable below 29. These balancers, they have temperature sensitive mutation. So DTS is basically a mutation on chromosome, which is temperature sensitive. Whenever we will raise temperature to 29, the flies will be dead. And they are over 
a balanced chromosome as well. So one of the chromosome contains DTS, which is a dominant mutation. Whenever we will have 29 flies, we'll be dead. And then balancer contains uh, dominant mutation, dominant phenotype as well. And homozygous balancer over balancer is also dead. Okay. Now in the F1, we choose, let's say, uh, this A static is showing you phenotype over balancer, okay? This, these males are crossed to again DTS over balancer females. And you select around 5,000 individual males you set up when you set up here. Here you start with, let's say 10,000 males. As many as possible you handle, but they say normally 5,000. Here you set up single fly cross single fly male cross out of this progeny you take single male and cross with balancer now progeny of 5000 individual crosses you will see now this what were the what will be the progeny genotypes balancer over balancer balancer over dts mutation over balancer mutation over dts now, balancer over balancer will be dead because it, these are dominant phenotype, uh, dominant uh, mutation, lethal. Then DTS over balancer or A over DTS, they, when you will raise temperature to 29, you will expose all of them to elevated temperature. The ones which will be dead, you know, <clears throat> this is already dead. Now you will be left with only your mutation over balancer, mutation over balancer, you will cross them. And again, the ones which will be homozygous lethal, they will be embryonic. So A over A, recessive lethal. Now this is mutation over balancer, balancer over balancer will be dead. You will be left with your mutation alone. Why we have such a beautiful scheme is a genetic screen has to be very smart. And a smart genetic screen is where you minimize your work. You minimize your work in such a way that you go and obtain your desired mutant right away without much work. Look, if we are if we were doing screen for recessive lethal, recessive lethal is dying at the end. Only the viable is your mutation over balancer. Balance over balancer is dead. So your work is you will, you don't have to look at this. You don't have to look at this. You don't have to look at these flies. This will be dead. Only out of this 5,000 crosses, 5,000 individual crosses, a lot of work. Out of these 5,000, you are just getting the progeny, the right progeny, which you will set up cross, go to next progeny, they will be dead, they will be dead and you will obtain your screen, uh, mutant. So that's how, and now, you know, there are much more smart uh, genetic screens as well, because in this one, even if you get your mutation, you still have to map your mutant gene map means you have to you don't know on on four chromosomes and so on the uh, uh, on the chromosome x then chromosome two three four normally in flies we write only x y two and three we don't write fourth chromosome on page okay. semicolon means independent chromosomes now, the point is, how do you map that your chromosome, uh, your mutation is on chromosome uh, two, chromosome three, or on X? That's uh, what we covered in, in our genetics course in sophomore. Uh, you know, we do recombination mapping, uh, chromosome balances are something of great significance for Drosophila geneticists because first you identify on which chromosome they are. Um, if they are on chromosome two, 
you will be using chromosome two balancer. If they're on chromosome three, you will be using chromosome three balancers. Uh, if they're on chromosome X, uh, you will be using, you know, FM Nullo is a balancer for uh, X chromosome. So you identify which chromosome contains your mutation uh, followed by then chromosome recombination mapping. You literally walk onto chromosome. Uh, nowadays we can use deficiency mapping, uh, chromosome deletion mapping and you uh, reach where potentially in which region your gene is. Uh, if you are a rich lab nowadays, you can do simply next generation sequencing uh, of that particular chromosomal region or chromosome. And within one week, you will know the whole uh, mutation profile. So with that, we uh, finish uh, segmentation screen and the pattern formation in flies and how we actually do uh, analysis uh, using fruit fly and try to see uh, different developmental patterns. So if there are any questions, let me know. So sir, I just have one question. Sorry. So, yeah. So we got the 14th virus segment uh, maintained even if we remove the entire biothorics complex. So it, isn't this enough evidence to like, because if something is there, which is maintaining the 14th para segment, uh, isn't there this enough evidence that there is a fourth master regulator in the biothorics complex, which is causing the maintenance of that last segment, even though if the entire, the three components of the biothorax complex are not there. I did not get your question. I, I understand you're talking about para segment 14 is still there, but what, what, what you are highlighting? So there can be another master regulator of the biothorax complex in addition to these three, which is cause maintaining that even if we lose the current present three biothorax no. complex. Uh, so in this case, they have, they remove the total biothorax complex. It was a big deletion, which means everything from uh, biothorax is gone. But we can have it on some other chromosome as well if we only remove it from chromosome three. Yeah, but then we will not call this biothorax complex. Now, biothorax complex is that particular region on chromosome three, which contains uh, uh, UBX, ABDA, and ABDB. Then we will call that another homeotic gene. Clear? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think there was somebody raised hand. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, was it? Sir, when you have white mutation with the red mutation, so you said we would inject whole cells. Why just whole cells and why not any other cells? Like if you inject the other cells, won't we just get the results in the same? in the same uh, generation? Very good question. So look, always when we make transgenic animals, we do germline transformation because you can inject your uh, transgen on the anterior side as well. Uh, you can inject in non-germline cells, which are basically somatic cells. Now you won't be able to see which of the cells are actually injected, which of the cells have taken up your construct. So we always inject germline cells, whether we are doing fly transgenesis, mouse transgenesis, or Arabidopsis, even the plants. What we do, we inject or we in, try to introduce our transgen in the germline cells so that we have stable integration of our transgen in every cell of living organism when the progeny comes in. Because in order to have transgen in every cell in the living organism, you all know fertilized, or, or the, sorry, the germ cells are the only way. Uh, 
because we all originate every cell in our body it is progeny of the germ cell did i answer your question yes sir thank you okay. any other question so uh amad can you divide them into five different groups and share the names of the groups let's say group 1 group 2 group 3 group 4 and 5 and i will send them the research papers now because now we are done with fly uh, segmentation uh, and this pattern formation lectures now they will be able to understand the research papers and we have covered uh, part of methodology and tools as well so i'll send them the papers uh, not this week but the we, uh, next week they will be all the groups they will be discussing the research papers okay we will okay. assign research papers to each group a separate paper and each group will be describing and discussing the research paper clear okay sir chale thank you very much allah hafiz have a good day there